All right, welcome back to another demo of VROS. Today, I want to talk about my mouse and my keyboard. I got a lot of questions about my input devices and how I got them to show up in this virtual environment the way that I did um, and how I solved this. In order to show you, I actually want to go out from the immersive environment for a second and show you the hardware that I built to make this happen. Okay, so here we are in my garage. This is where I developed this entire prototype. My desk here is just a standard desk. There's nothing special about it, but my mouse and my keyboard, as you can see, they're anything but standard. Let's start with the mouse. The mouse is a normal wireless mouse, uh, but I laser cut a frame and then glued the mouse into this frame so that I could then also attach a tracker to the frame itself. So now when I move the mouse around, when I pick it up, I can move it around. The prototype will always be able to infer the position of the mouse based on the position of the tracker. I can show you the underside here. So you can see the mouse is literally glued into this frame and then the tracker is screwed onto it. So this is how the operating system knows where the mouse is. And of course, by seeing the virtual mouse, my hand can just go to the physical mouse and start using it. Now, the keyboard is a bit more complicated. Let me actually first take off this here. Let's talk about this part. First of all, this is just a normal keyboard, right? So there's nothing special about this at all. This also sits in a custom made frame that also has a tracker attached to it. So now if I move around the keyboard, the frame and the tracker move as well. And again, the prototype can infer the position of the keyboard based on the position of the tracker. So that's somewhat simple. Now, this whole construction here that kind of sits on top of everything. And so this actually has a little USB camera. You can see the optics here. Has a little USB camera filming down onto the keyboard in order to capture my hands. And you can now see on my screen here how that actually shows. I have a pretty straightforward video feed just off the keyboard itself and my hands, plus a little bit of the environment here. And so what I do in the prototype is pretty much just cut out this section of the video and then separate my skin color from the keyboard, which luckily is mostly white, and then just show my hands. This is not a very special camera. Here you can see when I get closer to my um, to the camera with my fingers. The camera is not very special at all. It's not especially low latency or especially high resolution or anything, but it's absolutely enough to quite satisfyingly show my hands where they are exactly in pretty much real time on the keyboard. So this is the physical setup. And now let me go back into the OS itself to show you how these things end up looking in detail on the virtual input devices. All right, cool. So now we're back in VR here. Uh, you can see of course, my mouse and my keyboard, they're here. And now maybe what you're seeing makes a little bit more sense, right? So my mouse, again, I can just pick that up, move it around. And as long as the tracker is seen, um, or let's say, as long as the tracker gets the tracking information from the lighthouses, uh, it tracks just fine. It works when I just move it around on the table and it also works most of the time when I pick it up. I didn't do much to the model of the mouse. It's pretty lazy, actually. It's just a squished sphere, um, but it's good enough for now. 
uh, an interesting first idea that would be worth implementing if I wasn't recording these demos, I think is to actually make the mouse disappear once I touch it with my hands, right? The moment I touch it with my hands, I don't necessarily have to see the mouse anymore. And now the keyboard, again, you can see, I can just move that around. I'm just pushing it left and right on my desk. Um, I could, in theory, I can try picking it up too, but you know, then the whole construction starts falling apart pretty easily. And you can see the video feed that you just saw in actual RGB on my monitor. Uh, you can now see in here again. Uh, it's literally the same thing, right? It's filming my keyboard uh, and my hands. And I wrote a pretty simple shader to try to, to determine reasonably well where my skin color is versus where the background is. Uh, this. You can see how um, imprecise this shader actually works, how many artifacts it creates, where my hands are casting shadows. It's failing at my uh, at my ring here that I'm wearing. It's kind of failing at my um, at my fingernails. So this is anything but a great implementation. It changes with daylight. When I record later at night, I have to adjust the settings, etc. So it's quite sensitive, but it works. Uh, surprisingly well. Um, you can see if I go really down low, you can see that it's really just this totally flat projection on top of the keyboard. But somehow it still just really works in terms of f making me feel like these are my hands and I'm grabbing the keyboard and I'm moving it around. So it gives me a pretty nice solid connection to the real world. And this always helps in VR feeling like the real world is also kind of still connected to you in here. So you don't feel kind of too disconnected, free floating. All of those things could make you nauseous. So yeah, I, that's it's pretty much as simple as this. You can see I can go higher and lower with my hands here towards the camera just uh, almost cover the camera. In terms of how the keyboard is constructed in here in VR, it's also quite simple. I pretty much have a, I'm starting with a, a PNG. This is just a graphic for the different types of keyboard layouts that could be possible in here. And of course there could be a variety of different ones. If I actually go and go into the login flow, I can show you how this is how I actually start out with the keyboard in the trailer. Um, it's just most keys disabled with a custom power button here and some function keys here. Now you can really also see the artifacts that the, the video is or that the shader is creating. You might also be able to see a little bit better here that um, because of the optics of the camera, I do get quite a lot of distortion on the video um, with less distortion here in the central part of the keyboard and then more distortion the further I move away to the sides. You can kind of see that the, the corner of the video feed of the keyboard is actually over here, whereas the keyboard in virtual reality extends quite a bit further over to the corner here. But the lack of precision somehow, the lack of precision of the video somehow doesn't impact how easy it is to use the keyboard in here. I'm pretty sure that it has to do with the fact that there is a combination of visuals and the haptics for my finger, just feeling how I'm going from one key to another that it's enough for me to see even the kind of inaccurate information about the key placement, the exact key placement up here. And my fingers still instinctively just go to the right position. So now when I click here and it activates uh, the text field, then I'm basically just loading a different PNG, which shows different keys active or inactive. And now when I type, 
the highlights, they come actually from some custom quote unquote 3D geometry. It's not really 3D because it's actually just a bunch of flat polygons, but I'm using these polygons with their individual names to address them as I'm typing the keys, as I'm pressing the different keys. And so I'm basically just turning on blue polygons in order to shine through the PNG and create the highlight for the keys when I press them. This little feature here, which I call the text input viewfinder. Yeah, as I was describing earlier, this is just a neat little helper for typing. Uh, and you can really see that I'm, I'm okay at touch typing. So I can just write on here whether I'm looking down or whether I'm looking up. Uh, but even with this crude video feed, it's pretty surprising how well I'm able to just go with one key, one finger at a time and really just kind of aim at a key and really accurately end up hitting it without any learning curve whatsoever, really. So let me just uh, log in here. And ultimately, these having almost no learning curve, both the mouse and the keyboard, that was one of the very crucial things for this exploration for me. Um, I do believe that mouse and keyboard are very, very useful input devices for the type of work that we do in computers today compared to, for example, hand tracking. Um, or maybe a six degree freedom controller with a laser point system. Simply for the fact that I can achieve a lot with very little movement with the mouse. Um, obviously the keyboard is a great way of using function keys, keyboard shortcuts, and also typing in information. But the mouse really allows me to lean back and with just the smallest motion of my hand, of my wrist, pretty much access the entirety of the useful space in here. All right, so that's pretty much everything that there is to say about my keyboard and mouse implementation here. Uh, as always, just let me know if you have any more questions. I'll be making plenty of more videos later on. See ya.